Everyone good? Wicked, perfect. So, the current scenario is most aspiring athletes and gym goers don't actually they understand the difference between fueling for life and fueling for performance. So what our job today is to provide you with, I'm providing you with frameworks. Nothing in here is like specific just to you, but what I want you to be able to do is be educated in enough in the process to know what you, what, within reason, what you think you need to be looking at. And then coaches here have got the, the job of deciphering that and helping you. Cool. So my mission is to stop that. Is, is anybody listening to the diary of the CEO at the moment? Yeah. This, do you know, what's, what's the main thing coming out of that at the moment? Well, I've seen some of that in your slides. Yeah, yeah. That is the end of awesome. So on the diary of the CEO, especially at the moment, there's loads of um, nutrition advice around intermittent fasting. You shouldn't be eating carbohydrate. Insert, you, 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 if you're, there's, there's Zoe. A, yeah? Zoe. Zoe, yeah. <laughs> it's, there's too many people are finding information. I, I'm, a, I'm a science geek. I like to know the facts. And the problem with social media is people bend them to meet to, to, for marketing purposes, i.e. telling you it is a cure for your body composition goals to, to intermittent fast. As a female, for example, intermittent fasting is actually counterintuitive because you've got more estrogen than a man. So what I want to do is debunk all the stuff that we've heard on social media so you guys have got the right information. Cool. Does anybody know what the difference is between those? Awesome. Where you, you probably can't put your body under that stress all the time. Perfect. Exactly that. Optimal performance, we use for life. And that's what your general training is, is you want to be optimal, uh, optimal as much as possible. If I've got high rocks, we attack it. And every, life's about high rocks. Nothing else matters. Yeah? It, within reason. What, 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 if, if you've got any form of competition, if you're trying to get ready for, to look better naked on a holiday, if you're trying to don't be naked on holiday in public, <laughs> rephrase that. You look better in a bathing suit or a pair of budgie smugglers. Jack's got a good pair of them. I saw them yesterday. They're unbelievable. <laughs> um, that's what peak performance is, is basically putting you in a box. Optimal performance is if you looked at your gym sessions over a year, that's what we're looking for, optimal performance. So each time you turn and you get better. What's called the slide effect, Rob? So it's like from a, a gym perspective, from like most of you here at Tiny Club, when you approach the gym and your intention behind it, I think a lot of us get caught here. Associate with two things. So if you turn to the gym, you're constantly thinking about calorie deficits and things like that. And actually, we need to try and reframe, and that's kind of the, the point of today, is to lead everyone here a little bit more for 80 to 90 percent of, yeah. of our time, and then we can lean into that when it's appropriate. Right? Well, I the way the, the the analogy that I use for this is if your if your performance is like a factory, a factory is built to work at 80 percent because if it goes anywhere more over 80%, it puts get put under stress. You can't be put under stress 100% of the time. So what we want to do is get you to a baseline where everything's improving steadily, and there may be something more extreme, i.e. a competition, or like I said, from a body weight cut or whatever, that is a short piece of information for you, for sure. And the four roadblocks that I see are, you want everything right now. How many times have you heard somebody, I want to get shredded, strong, fast, fit. I want to be able to fit in this dress, but I also want to eat every single thing. I could get my hand on a Saturday, drink 12 pints, and we can't have everything. Yeah, whatever. There's trade-offs for everything. Yeah. And obviously, one size doesn't fit all. As mentioned, I'm a sausage. He's long. He can take way more. If you're looking at it from a nutrition standpoint, taller people. But anyone heard of body types before? Do you know what they are? Cool. So you've got... Say on. Awesome. Do you like mesomorph? Can you, what's a mesomorph? Oh, I don't know. No, she's got it. Cool. No, no, no. It, really, really important. Okay, so you've got mesomorph, which is basically um, someone who is is in between putting. They basically they can put on muscle well, but they can they, but they put on weight quite easily. They're not really that tall, but they're not small. You've got sort of an ectomorph, which is someone who's usually small. They put on body body fat and body weight a lot easier. They put uh, muscle on easier. They find it a lot harder to take off. An ectomorph is that you will all know like. The 18 year old who's like six foot nine looks like a bean pole. If you, he can take, it can take way more carbohydrates. So, but everyone fits in different categories. And that's whenever you're doing nutrition, you don't need to get too caught up about that. But that's, that's part of the game is a lot of the time what I see are people who are six foot four, who are, who are eating three salads a day. They, they can take way more food because they're bigger. Yeah. Um, 
And this is one of the big ones that I think is really important. Has anyone had their blood pressure done before? No. Yeah, does anybody know what their blood pressure is? Yeah, you know what your blood pressure is. Blood pressure, is, but indicatively, is the biggest sign of, of um, your ability to be able to absorb and to, and, to, and, to, and to adapt. The more stressed you are, the higher your blood pressure is. Anything above 125 over 80, we need to get that down. <coughs> Whereas the healthier you are, everything's better when you're healthier, obviously. Yeah? And the last one is how many people have been on a diet for a year? Yeah? Dangerous. Guys, we're smiling. Who, who actually resonates with that? Anybody? I used to be an obese fat kid. Yeah. And I, 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 if you, I, I've had an eight pack shredded ready for a fight and I still used to call myself fat in the mirror. My, my life for a long period of time was, it's a, a girl in year seven called me fat in a swimming pool. And that was it. Girl called Freya, legend. <laughs> She wasn't even fit either, raging. <laughs> but my point is that it, it, you'll see a lot of the time when it comes down to that, that fueled me to get into the performance of the, to the sort of nutrition space. Apart from I, I wasn't eating, eating disorder, but I went, I dropped three, like nearly three stone in a very short period of time. I was skinny, shredded. My brain was saying I was still fat. The visual was that I was actually in great nick. My point is if you do, if you diet for more than eight weeks, that's a nutrition strategy. That's not a diet. You want to, this is what I'm going to teach you is if we can have optimal energy, we're going to show you guys how to use it so you'll actually eat more food, lose more body fat, look better naked, be happier, and life will be better within reason. Cool? So the opportunity is to be able to pull the right lever at the right time. How many people have dropped carbohydrate out of the diet before? What happens when you drop carbohydrate out of your diet? Energy stores are just down. Down, yeah, massively. But what, 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 what happens with the scales? They go down. Does anybody know why? You know, I'm joking. She, she knows. It's very true. No, no, she's right. Water weight. So for every gram of, car, uh, for every gram of water that, uh, that you have, sorry, for every gram of carbohydrate you stored, which is called glycogen, you store three grams of water. Stop carbs, you'll lose three times as much weight. So an example, if you pull carbohydrate, you'll lose three or four kilos in a week. Life's good. And then what happens? Tired, you can't train, and you just you go from here, and you do this. So then what, should you, what, what do most people do? Binge. Binge. Or they eat less again. I'll cut a meal out. Or I'm going to do an hour of cardio in the morning. Or I'm going to go for another 30 minute walk because I'm already doing 25,000 steps and I'm going to do 30,000. Law of diminishing, diminishing returns, yeah? So ambition is if there is a time and a place to pull carbohydrate, again, we're going to show you. So optimal performance is the, basically primary focus is disease prevention. It's usually in uh, a social media trend. You guys would have seen the, the liver king. Everyone know him? Yeah. Eat liver and you're going to live forever. Yeah, rubbish. Yeah, uh, no judgment. And basically, it's misunderstood. It, it, it's, everyone thinks optimal performance is breaking down. What I want to show you, it's optimal performance is actually building you up. Because what we want to do is you, or you want to have some form of peak performance, which is the outputs are optimum. It's measurable. You have acute and long-term approaches. Like an example, I use Hyrox as a really good one. When you're carb loading, females need to carb load an extra, a day longer than a man because you don't absorb the same amount of food as, as fast. You just need three days, men need two. But you're not gonna eat, that's like 600 grams of carbs. You don't eat that all year round. You have that three days before, acute, yeah? Or long-term strategies are, you're in a maintenance phase of nutrition. That's your long-term strategy, yeah? Then individual and specific, and it's always evidence-based. Um, so, if we can see it, yes, it all works. Cool. Right then, hold my hand. We're going to go a bit deep. No, I'm joking. Okay, so layman's terms is you work left to right. This is, this, this is how you build somebody's diet, okay? So everyone heard of just calories in, calories out matters, yeah? Me, for me personally, how I coach nutrition, that is true. But there's also a case of, it's like saying, you want to be a millionaire, how you do it is you work hard. If you want to get in the best shape of your life, you just be in a calorie deficit. How many people have been in, in a calorie deficit and nothing's happened? Yeah, a lot of the time. So it's not that it doesn't work. It just, it relates to more than, there's a little bit more to it than just calories in, calories out. Long term, if you said from now until 2026, it probably could, it could work. But if you take these principles, it'll work on a continual basis. Cool. The reason why food quality is really important is because basically what's in food. So when you break down food, you don't want to, if you have just processed food, an example, anyone watched that McDonald's um, documentary years ago? where they, he ate McDonald's for a month. 
That's calories in, calories out. I promise you now, you may drop weight, but your health markers will be horrific. And also your breath will be minging as well. Ugh. So my point, we want to be food, we want to have less process, the better. Quality food sources, that does not mean it has to be organic. It, something that's, been, that's real is my, is my job. The more, the less played with, the better. Um, what you actually like is really, really important because you want this for long term. And convenience. Does anyone know what, what this means by convenience? It sounds really stupid, but I get, people get caught on this quite often. Cool, nice. Perfect. This, if you're ever stuck for food, I, these, I love these. These are, these are a meal replacement for like three quid. Rather than you having like just a cheese sandwich it, from, and then not eating again until 9 p.m., these are, these are, this is convenience food. Is, is it optimal? It's optimal for now because if I sat here with my Tupperware eating my chicken, broccoli and rice whilst I was talking to you, it wouldn't be very uh, professional, we would, yeah? Satiety, thermogenic, uh, thermic effect of food. For every um, gram of, of uh, protein that you, can, you ingest, you increase, you lose 25% through heat. Anyone heard of that one before? So when you, when you break down food, the, to get calories, it creates heat. Protein, technically, if you had 100 grams of protein, you're only taking 75 in. So if you're ever going to overeat ever, protein's always more beneficial because you're less likely to put on body fat with it. Yeah? If you want some reading on thermic effect of food, we've actually got that um, as a PDF, just the difference between gin. So if you want that, we can send it to you. Um, you can unpack that a little further. Epic. Um, and then, does anybody track their food in here? You do, yeah? Wicked. Percentage of grams per kilo of body weight. Depending on who you are in your training age, you either do fat-free mass or just, just, I just do body weight just because it's easier. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you where to get this in a minute. You can do it. We can all do this together quickly, if you, just for yourselves. Just a caveat to that, you do not need, you don't have to track food. But for me, seek to understand and to be understood. If you have no idea about food, tracking food gives you the understanding about what's actually in it. And then you, you shouldn't track your food for the rest of your life. It would just be weird. But if you did it for two weeks, you'll then know where you're at, if you know what I mean. Yeah? That's a, like, that's a tool to be utilised at appropriate times, right? So you don't want to get stuck into that habit of being dependent on my fitness pal. But at the same time, if you don't know, you can't change and improve, right? Exactly. So that's, it massively sits down to your daily splits, your weekly splits, yearly split and periodization. Uh, timing with recovery. Ladies, just a caveat. You need protein post-session non-negotiable if you want to improve. Reason why. Females have got higher estrogen than a man. Estrogen is catabolic. It breaks down the body. Men have got testosterone, more testosterone, so they, they can, the window for opportunity to not break down muscles longer. So let, when you finish the gym, you've got about 30 minutes. If you write down a lady called Stacey Sims, if you're a female, please Instagram, Google, listen to her stuff. And there's a book called Raw. If you do want to go, she is, she's like the leading person in female fitness. She would, uh, Stacey Sims. She, and she's, she's the lady who's sort of bringing up that, that females aren't small men. She, she, that was her caveat and she's incredible for understanding when to train around your period, understanding around uh, hormonal imbalances and everything sort of lady stuff. Trust me, she's wicked. And it has to be 30 minutes. Within reason. Yeah. Basically, that that's cool. Just don't do the, I'm going to train at breakfast and I'm, I'm going to fast until lunchtime and eat at lunch. So if you, if you did it within an hour or, or whatever is comfortable, I'm going to show you a slide in a minute which is about um, stress and understanding what that, the reason why is because when you train, anyone heard of, you heard of fight and flight before, yeah? yeah? So you go into fight and flight to train and then you need to come into rest and digest. So you go sympathetic then parasympathetic. You're not hungry because you're sympathetic. Mm -hmm. So you take, it takes some people, it could take 30 minutes, some people can take an hour, an hour and a half. Just don't let it be, your, the meal that goes in post needs to have protein in it yeah, yeah. because that's the building blocks for muscles. So don't, with, with regards to like, the problem with nutrition, nutrition's all like numbers, studies, whatever. For me, if you give me, everyone says to me, you, you should be having carbs pre. If I'm having a jam sandwich before I start I'm, and, I, and I have a coffee, my, my heart rate goes everywhere. If I, have, if I have something a little less um, glycemic, I actually perform better. Science says that I should be, but the actual application, this is why if you know, so this is the main thing is understand the principles, you can make them work for yourself. Yeah? Um, understand why, what sort of macros they are, we'll talk about them in a minute, and, and um, 
you don't, you don't have to have all the rest sorted for time. Timing is the only thing is that female piece was the piece that was really important. Does everyone, everyone understand the term macros? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. No. Carbs, proteins, and fats. Cool. Understanding your split of those. So an example, if if you're you're you're, you're on the on the in the barber shop all day on your feet, yeah. But it's it's just moving. It's not you're not going in the gym and then I don't know running to the shop or whatever. So you you're pretty steady in your day. You just lots of movement. Your body's mainly going to be running off fat and protein. Whereas if you get in the gym, it runs off protein and carbs. Protein pr uh, pr proteins basically stops your br the breakdown of muscle tissue. Carbs is fuel for exercise, but fats fuel for life. This is why people say like oh, carbs are bad for you. Well, they're not bad for you if you don't, if you don't absorb them. They're bad for you, which you'll see in a minute. Which is if you've got digestive problems, if you've got high, high inflammation, if you struggle, if you get flatulence, you start belching and, or whatever, that digestion is a huge part of absorption. But for macros, it's knowing what suits you. You're tall, so you can take more carbohydrate than, I'm a sausage, so I can't, carbs is limited for me. Yeah, everyone got that? Of, of this, okay. So for me, my macro split, I'm on 3,200 calories a day. I didn't, I didn't Iron Man, I wonder what day it is, August, August last year. I was on four and a half thousand calories a day. Yeah, but I was doing three and a half hours exercise a day. I'm, I'm 97 kilos, so it's like a fridge with legs moving. It's, it takes a lot of gas. Um, I, I can't get four and a half thousand calories of real food. It's quite difficult just unless you use a lot of fat. So around my workouts, I was using lots of sugars. When I'm, but I'm doing two hours on a bike, so I'm having 30 grams per half an hour. Um, and for every, afterwards, it's one gram per kilo for carbohydrates. So I was 97. After I worked out, I'd have about 100 grams of carbs. Now I'm not doing an Ironman. My macros are a lot less. I have 1,000 calories less. And like today, for example, I, I have um, 250 grams of protein. I have around 100 grams of fat, and the rest of my cut is all carbohydrate. I try and keep my carbs around my workout. So I've got a uh, flapjack for afterwards, and then I'm sure I'll go find something delicious afterwards after we've done that as well so my, that, that was the examples of my of my uh, macro targets but my calories are number one and the availability i.e if you're having sugar when you wake up in the morning like if you're just having like cocoa pops and walking out the door energy goes up and then it's gone if you have a bowl of oats energy's long and you're not going to have that sort of uh, that spike of feeling drowsy or whatever you you asked me Two, in two slides time. There you go, she got it. So, fueling for performance. So your performance is in the gym, performance is, that's my wife um, swimming. I haven't got that, that in the locker. I can't get anywhere near that. Uh, understand your calories, periodization, timing, pre-intro and post, and then restricted behavior. We just talked about that. If you're dieting the whole time, you're not gonna get to where you wanna get to. If you guys are on your phones, get your, get your phones up for me, and all I want you to do is Google Precision nutrition calorie calculator. 